Video number 89 from Mytho Religious Series Book 4 The Great Pyramid of Khufu in Giza, Egypt, Africa Part 1 Dear fellow truth seekers, In this channel I have shared with you some mysterious megalithic constructions in Europe, the Middle East, and South America. And until today, it remains a mystery as to how did our supposedly primitive ancestors build them. Then, in the past few weeks, I have shared information about other ancient megalithic constructions in a specific pyramidal shape that are found all over the continents in the world, i.e. Africa, America, Asia, and Europe. Although in video number 84, I have also shared briefly about the types of pyramids that are found in Egypt, North Africa. In this video and the next, I am going into further detail concerning the most famous pyramid in the world that is located in that region, that is, the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Giza. From the aforementioned video about the various types of pyramids in Egypt, we can clearly see that the newer Egyptian pyramids aren't comparable to the older ones. The older ones are by far much more superior than the newer ones. It seems as if they have lost the know-how. While it is possible that most of the pyramidal structures built around the world were once dedicated as a place of worship and or burial, the Great Pyramid of Khufu looks like it has another mysterious purpose. Pyramid Khufu does not stand alone. It is located in a complex called the Giza Necropolis or Giza Plateau on the outskirts of modern Egypt's capital city, Cairo. This complex of ancient monuments includes three pyramids, Pyramid Khufu, Pyramid Khafre, and Pyramid Menkaure, a massive lion man sculpture known as the Great Sphinx, other smaller tombs, a workers' village, and an industrial complex. The Great Pyramid of Khufu or Cheops is the largest Egyptian pyramid. It is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world and the only one to remain largely intact. Pyramid Khufu was the tallest man-made structure in the world for over 3,800 years until Lincoln Cathedral Spire surpassed it at around 1,300 CE in England. Even today, this pyramid, together with the other two great pyramids next to it, still tower above the city of Cairo. According to the prevailing archaeological theory, the three main pyramids on the Giza Plateau are funerary structures of the three kings of the 4th dynasty, circa 2575 until 2465 BCE. Pyramid Khufu was originally 481 feet 5 inches tall, or 146.7 meters, or around as tall as a 49-story building, and measured 755 feet, or 230 meters, along its sides, covering an area of 13 acres, or 53,000 square meters. It is large enough to contain the European cathedrals of Florence, Milan, St. Peter's, Westminster's Abbey, and St. Paul's. It is constructed from approximately 2.5 million limestone blocks weighing on average 2.6 tons each. Its total mass is more than 6.3 million tons, representing more building material than is to be found in all the churches and cathedrals built in England since the time of Christ. Pyramid Khufu was originally encased in highly polished, smooth white limestone and kept, according to legend, by a perfect pyramid of black stone, probably onyx. Covering an area of 22 acres, the white limestone casing, it was removed by an Arab Sultan in 1356 CE in order to build mosques and fortresses in nearby Cairo. The Interior According to our present knowledge, Pyramid Khufu is mostly solid mass. Its only known interior spaces being the descending passage, the original entrance, the ascending passage, the grand gallery, a mysterious grotto, an equally mysterious subterranean chamber, and two main chambers. 
These two chambers, called the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber, have unfortunately retained the misleading names given to them by early Arab visitors to the pyramid. It is an Arab custom to bury men in tombs with a flat roof and women in rooms with a gabled roof. Therefore, in the Pyramid Khufu, the flat-roofed granite chamber became the king's chamber, while the gabled limestone chamber below became the queen's. The king's chamber is 10.46 meters east to west by 5.23 meters north to south by 5.81 meters high, a series of measurements that precisely expresses the mathematical proportion known as the golden mean or phi. However, no mummies have ever been found inside this pyramid. It is built of enormous blocks of solid red granite weighing as much as 50 tons that were transported by a still unknown means from the quarries of Aswan, 600 miles to the south. Within the chamber, in the western end, sits a large lidless coffer, 7.5 feet by 3.25 feet, with sides averaging 6.5 inches thick of dark black granite estimated to weigh more than 3 tons. When the Arab Abdullah al-Mamun finally forced his entry into the chamber in 820 CE, the first entry since the chamber was sealed in some long time ago, he found the coffer entirely empty. Egyptologists assumed that this was the final resting place of Khufu. Yet, not the slightest evidence suggests that a corpse had ever been in his coffer or chamber, nor have any embalming materials, any fragments of any article, or any clues whatsoever been found in the chamber or anywhere else in the entire pyramid that in any way indicates that Khufu or anyone else was ever buried there. Furthermore, the passageway leading from the Grand Gallery to the main chamber is too narrow to admit the movement of the coffer, which means the coffer must have been placed in the chamber as the pyramid was being built, contrary to the normal burial custom practiced by the Egyptians for 3000 years. The common assumption that the Giza Plateau pyramids were built and utilized by 4th dynasty kings as funerary structures is still a matter of debate. It is a matter of archaeological fact that none of the 4th dynasty kings put their names on the pyramids supposedly constructed in their times. Yet, from the 5th dynasty onwards, the other pyramids had hundreds of official inscriptions, leaving us no doubt about which kings built them. The mathematical complexity, engineering requirements and sheer size of the Giza Plateau pyramids represent an enormous, seemingly impossible leap in over the 3rd dynasty buildings. Contemporary Egyptological explanation cannot account for this leap, nor can they account for the clear decline in the mathematics, engineering and size of the constructions of the 5th dynasty. Textbooks speak of religious upheaval and civil wars, but there is no evidence whatsoever of this having occurred. Who built it? The information of who built the pyramid is shrouded with myth. One of the myths that became attached to the pyramids when, toward the end of the first century CE, the Jewish historian Josephus included pyramid building among the hardships that the Hebrews had to endure during their years of labor in Egypt. For the Egyptians enjoined them to cut a great number of channels for the river and to build walls for their cities and ramparts, that they might restrain the river and hinder its water from stagnation upon its running over its own banks. They set them also to build pyramids and by this wore them out. This idea persists in the popular imagination, even though we know now that the Great Pyramids were constructed over a thousand years before the era of the Hebrews. Moses' Exodus was estimated at 1446 BCE while the Great Pyramid is dated at circa 2500 BCE. The other myth is that of the name of the builder of the Great Pyramid, i.e. King Khufu. The attribution to Khufu of the Great Pyramid of Giza 
is founded solely upon three very circumstantial pieces of evidence. The legends told to and reported by Herodotus who visited the pyramids in 443 BCE, the funerary complex near the Great Pyramid with inscriptions citing Cheops or Khufu as the reigning pharaoh, and the pyramid itself on a granite slab above the ceiling of the main chamber some small red ochre paint marks that have a slight resemblance to a hieroglyphic symbol for the name of Khufu. Pharaoh Khufu himself left no indication whatsoever that he built the Great Pyramid of Giza. He did, however, claim to have done repair work on the structure. On the nearby inventory stele, dating to about 1500 BCE, but showing evidence of having been copied from a far older stele contemporaneous with the 4th dynasty, Khufu tells of discoveries made while clearing away the sands from the pyramid, of his dedication of the monument to Isis, and of his building of the three small pyramids for himself, his wife, and his daughters next to the Great Pyramid. Regarding the red ochre paint marks found within the pyramid, most hieroglyph experts now believe this to be forgeries left by their discoverer Richard Howard Weiss, rather than being quarry inscriptions left by the original builders. Howard Weiss was under pressure to equal the discoveries of his rival, the Italian explorer Caviglia, who had found inscriptions in some of the tombs around the Great Pyramid. Modern researchers now suspect that in the battle for one-upmanship, Howard Weiss sought to overshadow his rival and gain renewed support for his own projects with a similar but more spectacular discovery by forging quarry inscriptions inside the Great Pyramid. In other words, no firm evidence in any way connects the pyramids of the Giza Plateau to the dynastic Egyptians. Dear fellow truth seekers, in this video I'm not going into deeper analysis yet, nor share my personal theory. Right now, I'm just sharing some information concerning this pyramid and other megalithic constructions first. However, based on everything I've shared in this channel alone, I can confidently state that the chronology of humanity's prehistory is incorrect. Also, as time goes by, older and older findings keep on coming up to the surface. Therefore, it is safe to say that I think our prehistory is much, much older than what is told by conventional historians. I will share my personal theory when it is time to do so, after sharing all the information needed to draw a conclusion. I'm ending this video for now, and will continue with the second part of a more detailed information concerning the Pyramid of Khufu next week. At the meantime, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.